Today we're going to hunt a Great Ragi. I'm not going to go over the fight in too much depth, as it's similar to Great Jaggy, who I also won't cover in too much depth. They're relatively simple fights, but this is a key quest and part of the early game progression, so it's important enough. I will mention here that you can think of Ragis as the poison flavor of Jaggies. Great Ragi can spit a poison cloud and it will linger for a bit. He'll do this after doing a backstep. If you see him do that, his next attack is most likely going to be the poison cloud, though it won't always be. If you manage to break his neck, it will weaken his poison clouds, making them smaller and not linger as long. So, let's get into the hunt now, shall we? Get into the habit of paintballing monsters early into your fight with them. Great Rogi, like Great Jaggy, comes with some minions that can be disruptive. Be sure to take them out if you feel the need to. There's Great Rogi's poison cloud. It will linger a bit if his head isn't broken, so be careful. Being poisoned can be annoying. I chose dual blades for this fight, as I think faster weapons work better against these mid-sized monsters, especially considering they have backup as well. It's definitely fine to use any other weapon that you want. With some practice, you shouldn't have much trouble with Great Rogi. Refer to my weapon guides where I fight Great Jaggy, a very similar monster, if you'd like some specifics. Dropping to Yellow Sharpness will reduce our damage, but it's not the end of the world. I'd recommend just toughing through it since you'll be sharpening a lot otherwise. Just like taking out the Rocky as they spawn, it's up to you how you'd like to handle things. You can't heal when you're dead, so make sure to do it before that happens. If you're having trouble not being hit when using an item, make sure the monster you're fighting is going to be stuck in an animation long enough for you to use it, or just leave the area. Don't neglect how useful it is to play a bit slower than you may be comfortable with. Slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. Pay attention here. I'm gonna run away so he runs to where I am, then I'll run past him to give myself a little more time to use an item. Notice how he ran past me, because that's where I was. Use this to your advantage as often as you can. Huh. 
Now that I'm in orange sharpness, this is unacceptable. I need to sharpen up ASAP. Be sure to gather items while out on a hunt as well. Honey is a very useful item that you can't get enough of. Mixing them with potions give us mega potions, which heal more for the same amount of time. Saving time is very useful. Now that Great Raggy's neck sack is broken, the poison clouds he makes won't linger. Like that. Great Raggy is limping away. It's almost dead. If you brought traps and tranks, now is the time to capture it. Otherwise, don't get greedy now. Don't fight monsters in tight spaces. It's advantageous to them, especially if it's in an area transition, as you'll likely go to the next area on accident as you fight. Great Ragi is being annoying. Since he's limping like this, he's just trying to run away. If you know a monster won't attack you, don't stop attacking. It doesn't quite matter right now, but notice that Great Raggy is drooling. That means he's exhausted and will be slower. It also means that traps and flash bombs, etc. will be more effective and last longer. Depending on the monster, putting down meat when they're exhausted will cause them to eat it. If it's raw meat, you can get some free hits in, but you can combine to make meat that puts them to sleep or paralyzes or poisons them as well. Watch out for that second bite. There we go. With Dual Blades, you need to focus on consistency. Don't worry about doing huge combos all the time. Focus on sustain, not burst damage. Take your time. But I have confidence that with some practice, Great Raggy won't pose too much of a threat for you. It's a stepping stone, so get stepping. Great Ruggie's armor has constitution plus one, which will reduce the stamina cost of rolling and blocking. The armor also has capture guru, which will change the color of the monster's dot on your minimap when they're paintballed if their health is under the threshold required to capture. You can also use some decorations to get poison negate and remove the double stun skill. While being stunned is technically avoidable by not being hit too often, the decorations aren't too awful to get, so you might as well. It's important to understand the opportunity cost of armor skills. 
If you can have any armor skill that you wanted, then of course, rolls costing less stamina is a nice little bonus. But since we can only have a small selection of skills, you may be better off without it. Especially if an item can give us the same effect, or better, such as power juice giving us infinite stamina. If that's the case, you can basically ignore that the armor skill exists, even if the item used is relatively expensive or hard to come by. Armor skills are just that important. So, the Great Ragi set. Unless you want to dress like a cowboy, and I don't blame you, you can safely ignore this armor set. Unless you really want another Capture Guru set for cheap and or early on. The stamina skill can be made useless with items, and poison negation, while nice, is a pretty niche skill that won't always be used. Well, that's Great Ragi. Until next time.